Hey everyone, so this video would have been the Melina episode of Mortal Kombat 1 online. However, I've got to be honest with you, at this stage I don't think that video is going to be happening. In fact, I don't think any Mortal Kombat 1 content is going to be coming on the channel anytime soon. I've got to be honest with you, I've been having a really tough time with this game. You've probably noticed that the rate of uploads for this series has slowed down considerably over the past few weeks. And that's because I've just been getting more and more frustrated with Mortal Kombat 1 as a package. And today, it really just like boiled over and reached its peak while I was trying to record this Melina episode, so I am going to talk about my current feelings on this game. I've got to be honest with you, I think this game at its core has some fundamental issues. Even though the gameplay itself can be fun, NRS I think is absolutely fumbling the whole thing and they are clueless when it comes to balancing and are so driven probably by the publisher Warner Bros for profits that this game is significantly lacking and is filled to the brim with annoying features. I could keep on pumping out Mortal Kombat 1 videos and getting increasingly frustrated and enjoying myself less and less because I've got to be honest with you, the videos do get a lot of views, but it's become such a pain now. And you know, I'm not the type of YouTuber that just like keeps playing a game that I don't enjoy for views. So yeah, I've got to be honest, until something significantly at its core changes with this game, which I don't think is going to be anytime soon, I am going to stick to other games, there are plenty out there, and I don't think I'm going to touch Mortal Kombat 1 anytime soon. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about why I feel this way. And like I said, this is something that's been building up more and more, and I've always had these issues, and I've always voiced these issues with the game, but... Like I said, as the months roll by, I mean, it's been a little bit over two months since the game released, these annoyances are getting harder and harder to justify. First things first, the main issue I have with this game is that even two months after the release and a number of patches, the online is still garbage. There are still no lobbies, there is still no Wi-Fi filter, there is still no connection filter. I don't think I've played a modern fighting game since maybe Street Fighter V that has had an online as bad as this game does. I've got to be honest with you, at this point, a majority of my matches are laggy. I'm using the same connection, I'm on wired, I have fast internet, and in combat league, game after game, I'm getting put against Wi-Fi warriors, laggers, maybe even lag switchers, and it's just absolutely killing this game for me with the fact that there is zero tools that would allow you to filter these people out. Like I said, not since Street Fighter V have I played a fighting game where the online and the amount of bad connections versus good connections ratio was this bad. It seems to have gotten even worse during Season 2. Uh, some people have been talking about this, but like the online wasn't good before, but season two just, I don't know what it did, but it completely killed the online even more for me. Oh, and of course, we don't get any of the filters that everybody's asking for, but now we have two out of three combat league matches that literally no one wanted. Perfect. Even with good ping, the game randomly slows down for me. There is stuttering. I mean, Wi-Fi players are simply unplayable against. It makes Combat League and online in general just extremely frustrating to deal with. Especially since I play online most in fighting games. I do not tend to touch like arcade mode and story mode and all of that. So with that, the amount of time I spend online versus how bad it is, it's making it just like really frustrating to deal with. Especially when I can just hop over to Street Fighter 6, where I can filter people properly, set up the game and online how I want it to be set up, and have matches where most of them are incredibly smooth and have low ping. And, of course, not to mention, there's still no crossplay in this game, something that NRS promised to be implemented soon after the release of the game and is nowhere to be seen. In fact, they are completely silent on it. And overall, the whole game is giving off a feeling that online really was an afterthought here and NRS put zero effort into actually making the experience playable. This is especially strange because I thought that 
MK11 had a very good online mode. I didn't enjoy the core gameplay of MK11, but I do not remember nearly as many laggy matches and terrible connections that I had to deal with in that game as I experienced in this game. The second really big issue that is killing MK1 for me right now is its balance. I think currently the game's balance is in a worse state than ever. It has always been clear, I think ever since Mortal Kombat X, that NRS is just terrible at patching and balancing their games. They do a lot of panic balancing based on whiny Twitter people without actually looking at the overall picture and letting any sort of meta develop or letting sort of players figure out how to deal with situations. Listen, I don't necessarily agree with Capcom in that they are going to be balancing Street Fighter 6 once a year, because then that leaves the other issue of something being really broken and that just kind of staying. But NRS is on a whole other level. Literally, as soon as a large majority of the casual community starts whining about something, they immediately jump in and nerf things to the ground. That's the other issue with the balancing tactic NRS uses. They tend to nerf way more than buff. So what you're basically ending up with is instead of other characters and cameos in this case being balanced to be around the same power level, what they do is just they just take the top tiers and just nerf them absolutely into the ground. Case in point now, the current situation is that Kung Lao has always been mega powerful. He has always been, since the release of the game, been an S tier cameo, but everybody was whining about Cyrax, mainly because Cyrax was way easier to use. And to be fair, I'm like not downplaying Cyrax here. I, after a while, hated fighting against Cyrax because he was just like really annoying. But NRS has made no efforts to let the meta actually develop and just panic nerfed Cyrax. With this panic nerfing, NRS basically has left many characters in the dust. I'm talking about Scorpion in particular, who is probably now the worst character in the game, maybe tied with Sub-Zero, while leaving actual problematic cameos like Kung Lao untouched. If you guys play MK1 right now, you know that Lao is all over the place. I basically fight him like 8 out of 10 times in Combat League. He essentially gives, with the low hat hold, he essentially gives every character an ice clone that a huge majority of the cast just simply has a very difficult time to deal with. Oh, and of course it recharges so fast that the opponent is almost never without that trusty low hat. And on the other hand, now Cyrax is at a state where he has zero uses. You use him once and there's like a good 20 to 25 seconds where he's locked away. It really does lead to the most stale and boring gameplay where everybody is just jumping on top of the current top tier and you know that this is just bandwagoning. You know that there eventually will be a patch. NRS is going to panic nerf Lau as well, just like they panic nerfed Cyrax. They're going to completely destroy him and nerf him into the ground because people are complaining on Twitter and online. But my point is, this is not how you should be dealing with balancing your game. There is zero attempts to look at the whole picture, addressing the low tier cameos, like seriously, I don't think I've played against a Motaro since maybe the first one to two weeks of the game's release. So instead of looking at the overall picture and finding out what we should be buffing and maybe making some reasonable counterplays along with balancing to the top tiers, no, you know that they're just going to get patched and immediately destroyed. So when nerfs happen, instead of thoughtfully addressing the issues and coming up with more creative ways of balancing, NRS will just completely destroy a character slash cameo and make them unusable. Aside from the cameo balance, character balance is equally terrible. You have characters like Johnny Cage who have been S tier since the start, receiving essentially no changes. You know, Sindel has been broken with essentially touch of death combos since launch, while a character like Melina can't even have a full screen projectile. A character like Sub-Zero can't even have any damage or can't even have a proper ice clone. There's an MK YouTuber I watch quite a lot, MK Tom Brady. Uh, he has really the best take on it. He's always said that clearly NRS is afraid of making things powerful that people have cried about or were upset about in the past, i.e. Ice Clone, Melina Projectiles, etc. As these upset the casual audience of the game. Yet, 
the really popular characters must be kept strong because that's what draws people in. At the same time, no, we can't listen to any suggestions from the pros because that would potentially alienate the casuals. This game has just like a really strange balance overall because some characters seem to have all the tools and then other characters are so restricted and lacking so many basic features that they can barely compete. I think what happened here is that NRS really is stuck in the way that they can't appeal to both sides of the audience and whereas Capcom tried to appeal to casuals with more creative things like modern controls, you know, having just like a ton of different types of matchmaking and lobbies and all that, CPU battles, etc. NRS is just stuck seemingly randomly buffing and nerfing things based on whatever is trending on Twitter that week. I think they've just like not managed to strike this balance and somehow it's managing to completely kill the competitive scene and any competitive interest, even the limited competitive interest that this game has. And finally, the third point I really wanted to mention, I have to touch on the fact that this game as an overall package, I think, exemplifies the worst of the gaming industry currently. I can say this with 100% honestly, I completely regret buying the premium edition of this game. I had trust, maybe too much trust in NRS, but I've got to say, this is honestly my last straw. I was slightly burnt by Injustice 2. I had, I thought Injustice 2 had some like really shitty predatory monetary pa practices. That was basically the same with MK11. MK11 had terrible gameplay on top of that too. And at this point, I can honestly say no more. I am not going to purchase an NRS product, an NRS game, the next time one releases. I'm going to maybe wait until the game is actually finished, is actually complete with characters and proper features, and maybe buy that version. This game is simply incomplete. It's bare bones, and as mentioned, there are some really easy to implement quality of life features and key features that are missing. And on top of that, basically what I touched on previously, I think the monetization practices here are truly disgusting and are exemplifying the worst of the industry. I'm sure most of that is coming from WB Games, so I can't and I won't blame NRS for this, but still, this game does everything it can to predatorily wring as much money out of you as possible, using the classic tactics, you know, FOMO, charging insane prices for nostalgic skins, seasonal fatalities, limited time items, and the likes. When I look at the store of this game and I see the prices and I see what's available, I instantly get a bad taste in my mouth because I'm like, I, I shouldn't be supporting this. I just shouldn't be encouraging this practice and making this game more popular. And you know, the saddest thing is from what I've seen, all of these tactics are working. That's the worst part of it. I can't even tell you how many times I was hit with the Halloween fatality last season and even now some people pull it out. It's really sad that people are that easily influenced and the fear of missing out is so strong that they're willing to drop, what, like 10 bucks on an animation. It's absolutely insane to me. This just ties everything together in a neat little shit package. There is so much I dislike about this game and so many frustrating things and so many annoyances. And the more I play of this game, Especially since now with this MK1 online series, I'm getting to the characters that are sort of outside my comfort zone. The more these issues just sour every single play session for me. And, you know, adding on this, I'm sure things will change. I don't doubt that. NRS always pulls together and actually manages to patch their game and eventually implement everything people are asking for towards the end of the game's life cycle. I'm sure by the end of season two, if we do get a season two where we'll have like four extra characters, we will have an actual functional fighting game on our hands. Until then, I think I'll just say that I'll stop torturing myself and frustrating myself with this game. You know, I work a full-time job, I do music, I do YouTube, I have other things, and I already have limited time for gaming. And with the fantastic selection of games that have released this year, you know, like Street Fighter 6, Armored Core 6, Blasphemous 2, etc. I think I have better things to do than play against the 247th Wi-Fi Warrior in Combat League. 
I will keep up with this game's updates, don't get me wrong, and if something significantly changes, I will return. I don't want to hate this game, I don't want to make this video, I don't want to stop playing this game, but at this point all of the frustration is just too much. I am really disappointed because as mentioned, I think there is a great core game at the heart of Mortal Kombat 1, there is just too much piled on top to actually get there. And you know, I gotta say, to get my money's worth, I will try the DLC characters when they release, but until then I think I am done. So yeah, if I did disappoint you with this video, I am really sorry, but that's just how I feel currently about Mortal Kombat 1. If you are subscribed for MK1 content, I do encourage you to check out my other stuff. First of all, I have plenty of MKX videos and MK11 videos, but I also do other games and I think I'm going to move on and play some Dark Souls, which is always a treat and always a game that I actually enjoy playing. So if you do stick around to that, uh, thank you. Hope to catch you in another video. If you don't, I will return occasionally and like I said I have my hopes up that they eventually will get their shit together and fix this game but yeah until then I think there's going to be very limited MK1 content on this channel. So thanks again for watching if you did enjoy like comment subscribe what do you guys think about MK1 do you see where I'm coming from or agree with this or do you feel completely different about this game let me know your thoughts and yeah I hope to catch all of you next time with whatever else I'm doing take care and goodbye.